Hello and welcome to another Wingate 7 sneak peek series video. In this video, we're going to look at how you can use a database to manage a whitelist for web access. You could use a global data list for your policy. This is a simple way to create a whitelist, and I've got a policy here to demonstrate. When a request is made to the proxy, we check the requested URL against our whitelist, and only permit sites that match. This list is stored in the global data window, and can also be edited from within the policy. This is fine if you only need a handful of sites on your whitelist, but maintaining a list with several hundred sites becomes unwieldy and hard to manage. A better option is to use a database for your whitelist and have Wingate perform a simple query to check the requested URL against the records. With the Wingate 7 policy framework, you can run SQL statements from within a policy and incorporate the results into your policy. Let's have a look at that now. Obviously you need to have access to a database. I'm running a MySQL server on my local machine, but you could have yours anywhere on your network. I've created a new database called Wingate, and in that database I have a table called WG Whitelist. We only need a couple of fields, ID, user and site. I've also added a couple of sites to our whitelist which we can see here. Notice that I'm using the percent wildcard for the user field. This means that these sites are available to all users, and we'll come back to this later. Next we have to add a new system DSN for the database, so open the ODBC administrator. If you're using a 64-bit OS, then you need to use the 32-bit ODBC manager. So go to the Windows directory, open the SysWow64 folder, and double-click odbc32.exe. Click Add, select the MySQL ODBC driver, and enter your connection parameters. Choose our Wingate database, and we're all set. Now we need to create the policy in Wingate. Click to create a new policy, and choose any HTTP proxy. We're going to use this whitelist for all HTTP requests, and we're going to apply it to our www proxy service. And we'll call this policy database whitelist. Drag the request event into the policy window to get started. The first step in the policy is to run an SQL statement. And if we have a look at the tooltip, we can see that the SQL statement is effectively a Boolean check. A match on a database record returns true. If we run the SQL query on our whitelist and there is a matching record in the database, the request will be granted. So let's drag the SQL statement element into the policy. Select the DSN that we created for the whitelist. And enter the SQL statement that we're going to use for our lookups. Notice that as I write the statement, I can click the symbol button to grab any of the session parameters that are available to Wingate. For the user lookup, I'm going to use user account name. And for the site lookup, I'm going to use request server. Note that there's no need for a semicolon at the end of the query. Now we need to define what happens when we get a result from our query. We'll allow the request when there is a match, and we'll reject a failed lookup with a message to say that access has been denied by the whitelist database. Now we need to hook up the policy elements, save the policy, and we're all done. Let's check it now. Our user Bob will try to access a permitted site first. Let's go to wingate.com. Now we'll go to facebook.com and we can see the rejection message. So that's a database whitelist for all users. But what if we want to allow a certain user to access a particular site? Let's say that Bob is allowed to access Facebook. Firstly, we'll add to, need to add a new record to the database for Bob and for Facebook. Note that we also need to add a site for FBCDN, as this is where Facebook stores its CSS files. Now we need to modify the policy, 
and we've got a couple of options here. Instead of a rejection on a request, we can prompt for authentication. This gives the user the chance to enter their username to see if they have access to the site. So we'll save that policy and watch as Bob tries to access Facebook again. We can see that he's prompted to authenticate and once he's entered his credentials, he has access. However, if he tries to visit a site that's not on the whitelist, he'll be prompted to authenticate again. Another option is to force all users to authenticate at the start of the policy. So we'll unhook the request event and drag on a user group check. Now we'll add the authenticated users group so that the policy checks to see if the user has previously authenticated. If not, we'll prompt for authentication. We'll just hook the policy back up and save it. Now we'll see that before any browsing can occur, Bob needs to authenticate. So using a database allows you to manage a much larger whitelist and gives you greater flexibility and control over your user's access. You could also use the policy in the same way for a blacklist, just swap the allow and deny results. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to extend your policies with Wingate. You really can create very complex and powerful policies simply. For more information go to wingate7.com. Thanks for watching.